else. So this is not just a one-time deal. You only do it once. You can check for anything else. We have a 2, a 2, a 1, and a 9. Do these share any common factors? No. no. Do I cross out these ones because they're both 2s? No. Oh, it's got to be top and bottom. Okay. So if I do the product of what's remaining, I have 2 and 2. What's that give me? 4. 4 over? 9. I'm going to encourage you to ultimately you're going to be using this way. But ultimately, this is the way that people do math, all right? When you go on to A and C, you're doing this. For right now, choose between these two. Don't do this one, okay? This one's too long. It's, it's too hard. I don't want you multiplying and then having to simplify because you're basically redoing all of this stuff, okay? That, that would just be a horrible waste of time. Don't waste your time and give me the multiplication first. If you're multiplying fractions, we can simplify as we go using the second or third method. Raise your hand if you're all right with that. Good. I'm going to show you both these for about maybe two examples, and then I'm just going to show you this one from then on out, okay? Did this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're dividing numbers by the same number. So we're dividing whatever has a common factor, like 7 to 14. 7 divides both those. 7 goes into 7 only one time. We cross out and put a 1. How many times does 7 go into 14? Well, two times. We're crossing out and putting 2. Notice we're just dividing. We're doing 14 divided by 7. That's 2. We're doing 7 divided by 7, that's 1. We're doing 6 divided by 3, that's 2. 27 divided by 3, the same number, that's 9. Let's see if we can pick this up with a few more examples. By the way, you, you might have heard of a common denominator. Have you ever heard of a common denominator before? If you've had anything to do with fractions, you probably have. Maybe some of you have. Some of you maybe have not. A common denominator would be a denominator that is exactly the same. Is that something we need for multiplying fractions? Did we need the same denominator here? No. No. We don't even have to worry about that. That's going to be something a little bit later. So if you're worried about a common denominator, we don't need that for multiplication. We're not going to need it for division. Okay, 6 over 77 times 7 eighths. Hey, wh what's the first thing that I'm going to have you do up here? Okay, exactly. I want one fraction out of that. Now, if you get really, really lazy, you don't want to write one fraction, here's what you can do, okay? If you, if you are multiplying, if you're multiplying, math people are lazy, I'm lazy. I don't like to show a lot of work either. But you need to. You need to show it, especially at this point in your math careers. If you get really lazy, you're like, you know what, I don't want to write the extra step. There's one thing I'll allow you to do. I'm not going to do this on the board. I'll always rewrite it. But if you'd like, you can just do this. Yeah. If you're multiplying, if you are multiplying, does this work for addition? Subtraction? Division? But if you're multiplying and you want to show one fraction, just do that. Extend the line, put the dot in the dot. Now that means you're multiplying. That's exactly the same thing that we, we would have during the next step. You seeing that? Yes, no? You guys with me? Yeah. So you can do that if you'd like. Now, personally, I'll always rewrite it because I want you to see it step by step. So first thing, I need to see 6 times 7 over 77 times 8. That's the only way that we can simplify fractions is get them as one fraction first. Now, there's two options. First option is to do what we did here. I don't want you to multiply and get 42 over whatever this is. That's just way too big, right? That would take you a lot of time. We don't want to do that. So option one is we could write this out as a product of prime numbers. Instead of 6, we could do 2 times 3. 7 is already a prime number. That would stay there. Instead of 77, we could do 7 times 11. Those are prime numbers. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. That's 2 to the third power, or 8. And then we can simplify as we go. Are you okay getting down that far, by the way? Mm -hmm. 6 is 3 times 2. 77 is 7 times 11. 8 is actually 2 times 2 times 2. That gives you 8. And then we cross out all those factors that are identical. You always have to do 2 times 2 times 2. Like you, can do do, you could do 2 times 4 if you wanted to take that little shortcut. What I'm showing you is the prime factorization, so I'm going to go all the way down on that. But uh, really, I mean, if you're going to do the 2 times 4, you may as well just do the cross-up method from there. Right? You may as well just do that. So here we have a couple twos. 
No threes, but we have a couple sevens. We multiply what's remaining. Yeah, three for sure, because we have the three. 11 times four is 44, and that's as simple as it gets. This is what's nice about doing the second and third method here, is once you simplify it, that's it. I mean, there's no possible way you can go any further simplifying, because it would have been taken care of right there. That's what's kind of nice about that method. Now let's try the other way. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this method because this is the one that you're ultimately going to end up using. What we're doing is we're looking for numbers that divide something on the top, our numerator, and something on the bottom, our denominator. Can you think of any two numbers which share that common factor or share a number that divides them? Seven. Seven, seven and what? you got to give it to seven. Seven and, well, there's no 11, but there's seven and a 77. Oh, but it comes out to 11. Sure. We can divide both those numbers by the same number. That's what you're looking for. Can you divide two numbers by the same thing? Okay, yeah. we got it. We got 7 and 77. What divides both those numbers? Seven. Seven. Now you're going to perform the division. We say, how much is 7 divided by 7? One. 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 Okay. How much is 77 Eleven. divided by 7? That's where we get that 11. Yeah. We keep going until we can't do that anymore. Is there anything else we can do? Yeah, two. yeah six and eight. Six and eight share a factor of two. two. Let's divide by two, bless you. If we divide six by two, so six divided by two is? Three. Eight divided by two four. is? Four. Are we going to get the same thing? Yes. yes. Yeah. Three times one is three. Eleven times four is forty-four. We get three or four. Either way, we do this. We should end up with the same answer. We have to. It's math. There's only one of them. Okay. Do we have to do both steps or can we just do one? No, no, just do one. Yeah, I don't want to I do not I don't want to see both. I'm saying you can choose one, okay? Right now I'm showing you both. But by all means, please don't do both. I mean, that'd just be a waste of time, right? Certainly don't do all three. My goodness, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, this one, we, I don't ever want to see that from you guys. If you show me this, I, really, I know that you really don't know how to multiply fractions, okay? You may be able to multiply numerators and denominators, but you don't know how to simplify it correctly. So I want to see you doing one of these things, but only one of these things. Yeah, good question. We got 23, 30 seconds and 4 sevenths. What is the first thing you always do when you're multiplying fractions? Before you simplify, actually. Make it one. Yeah, make it one. If you want to just draw the line, put the dot in the dot, signifying you understand that multiplication is multiplication of numerators and denominators, that's acceptable to me. If you want to do it, what I'm going to do, which is 23 times 4, 32 times 7, just write that as another step, that's fine as well. Now, if I were to do this according to the first method, the only thing I would be able to break up on the numerator would be that 4. I could break that up as 2 and 2. On the denominator, this is where it gets kind of, kind of well, annoying to do this, this step. It'd be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's five twos you'd have to write out, right? I don't want to do that. That's why we kind of tend to lean towards this idea, where we just look for numbers where we can divide by a common factor. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to skip this this method from now on, okay? I'm really just going to show you this one. How many people feel okay with that? Okay, that method is the one you're, you're going to ultimately be using in, in here and every other class you ever take. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Can you see a number that divides something on the top and the bottom? Four and four. thirty-two. Okay, four and thirty. What factor goes into both four and thirty-two? Four. four. Again, we're thinking of the biggest number, right? Thinking of the mm -hmm. biggest number. We don't want two, because then you have to do this again. We want the biggest ones. So four goes into four, or divides four how many times? Four, four goes into 32, or divides 32? <coughs> Let's look for anything else. Do we have anything else? Oh. No. no. 23, that's a prime number. Seven is a prime number. So we go ahead and multiply the rest of these. 23 times one. Eight times seven gives you? That's as good as we can do. It's not simplifiable after that. Question? Um, 
Let's say it one more time. I didn't hear you. You don't have to use a prime number. You can just use any number. When you're, when you're simplifying? Yeah. Exactly. You, we can write this as the product of primes if you'd like, but you're going to see that when you do that, If I were to break this up as a product of primes, it's 23 times 2 times 2. 32 is 2 times 2 times 2. 5 twos and a 7. If we're doing that, what we're really doing is we're simplifying just a couple of these twos, right? That's actually simplifying 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. We're really just dividing by 4. That's what we're doing. We're dividing the top by 4, our numerator, and the denominator by 4, and that's where we're getting that. So we're doing the same process here. It's just we're, we're not having to, or we're neglecting to write out the prime factorization. It is the same idea. It's just you're taking a little, I guess maybe it's a sh not a shortcut really, it's still mathematically legal. You're just dividing the top and the bottom by a larger factor at a time, rather than just two at a time. Does that make sense? Okay, so do you need to divide by a prime number? No. Any number that divides both a factor on the top and a factor on the bottom will work just fine. Good question. Let's go ahead and do a few more. Are you getting the hang of this? Four over twenty-seven to our times three eighths, and the first thing we do is what's the first thing we do? Got to have one fraction. So extend that line, put the dot in the dot if you'd like to, or rewrite it like I'm about to. Four times three over twenty-seven times eight. Four times three over twenty-seven times eight. We're looking for a couple methods here. Either we're going to do this and do the prime factorization, or we're going to divide a number on the top and the number on the bottom by the same number. So let's go ahead and look at this. 4 times 3 and 27 times 8. Someone on the right-hand side of the room. Tell me a number that divides, or tell me two numbers that have the same factor. 4 and 8. Seven. 4 and 8. Okay, here 4 and 8. What number goes into both 4 and 8? Four. Four. So right now we look at those numbers. We see which one, or which two, have a common factor. We divide by that common factor. So if 4 is the biggest number that divides that, we divide 4 by 4. What's 4 divided by 4? 1. What's 8 divided by 4? 2. And right there, we've simplified by a factor of 4. We've just divided the numbers on the top by 4 and the numbers on the bottom by 4. Anything else? 3. 3 goes into both those. 3 divides 3 how many times? 1. 27? One. Make sure you're writing the ones, because if you don't write those ones and you just have this, it looks like there's nothing on the top of that. And if you just are writing 18 afterwards, we're really not having the right idea. There has to be a numerator up there. What is on our numerator? One. Yeah, really, we have the 1 times 1. That's our fraction, 118. Does it work with negatives? Yeah. Negative one fourth times one half. Nothing about those multiplication rules change, so a negative times a positive is still a negative. <clears throat> How much? Negative one eighth. Negative one eighth. So we would do the negative. We know our answer is negative, and oftentimes it's better.